I wanted to touch just a little bit on some tidiness um, issues with floor plans and how to make them a little bit more readable, easier to follow. So here you have an example of a floor plan. Um, with tags, if they're going up against a vertical window, I like to select them. So you can select both by holding control down and select all the ones you want to. Then when you come up to this little box here, you can change it to vertical. And that way it follows the window a bit better and then you can go and adjust it and put it wherever you'd like it to be. And that way it helps keep that associated with the window a little bit better. Um, another thing with section cuts, something that helps keep lines from going clear across to everything. So if you zoom into the center of it, there's a little break line there. And when you click it, if I can get the right break line, I might have to zoom in a little bit. It's not wanting to do it for me. Move that out of the way. There we go. So when you click it, you've got two little handles to drag where you want the, the brake line to end. So this way, you still have the, the head on the outside, but then you don't have these lines going through everything. So it's still easy to see where the section's happening without cluttering things up. The next thing I'd like to talk about is dimension strings. <clears throat> this one still needs a little bit cleaned up. But usually we have three layers of dimension strings. So you have a far outside one. I'm going to put that one in right here. Always do to the face of core. So to the edge of the stud wall. And then, so this is the overall length of the wall. So that's what it is there. Let me pull this out just a little bit further. So you have the overall dimension from wall to wall. And then the next level, second level, it breaks up all the different wall partitions. So you've got the edge of the wall here, and then you have a bump out here. <coughs> and we also need to include the interior walls that will intersect while going along that wall as well. So to keep it consistent, I always go to the top of the wall when they're horizontal walls. <coughs> and if they're vertical, I go to the right of the wall. So then on the second string, we've gotten to all the any jogs in the wall or any interior walls that will intersect that. And then for the third layer, this is the one that will include all of your windows where they're located. and and doors as well. So for consistency's sake, we don't well, we don't need to take this one all the way out to the edge because we already have that dimension here. But then we come and that intersects this wall. Then we need to take this to the center of the window, to the center of this window as well. Top of this wall, and then the edge of this wall, and it needs to come clear over to the edge of this wall as well. So with this, we can see that there's a little bit of clutter going on there. Let's try to clean this up a bit. If the dimensions are too big to fit in there, I'll usually drag them out, grab this little handle here, move them away, and put it where you want it. I try to get these to, to look somewhat clean and decent when I'm doing this, and that way there's no confusion where this dimension is going to. I like to make sure that it's as clear and as readable as I can make it. For these spots, if we need, we can bring that handle up just a little bit so it's not getting in the way of these dimensions. And that helps a lot. Another way to clean up the sections is pull the dimensions out like this, and then you can move the section head by grabbing the little handle and bring it into there. That way it's just a little bit less lines that it has to cross, so it's easier to follow. And then you do that with all of your walls to have the three three dimension strings and the three different levels of that. <clears throat>